Hey y'all, I'm Chris. There's Greg, he's already looking up a recipe. This is, is it worth it y'all? And look what we got. This is what we've been harvesting out of the garden. And today we are going to probably make ketchup out of old tomato sauce and then make new tomato sauce out of this stuff. So stick around and we'll take you through some of our recipes because this is a part of the Every Bit Counts Challenge put on by Three Rivers Homestead. So week three, here we go, enjoy. I don't know what the total poundage of this is. I have to go back and look at all of the times that I've weighed tomatoes, but these are all of the tomatoes that we did not use for fresh eating that we've been collecting since we started. So we can put this in, uh, we just put these in the freezer so we could make something later and now is later. So Greg and I are gonna take and use, oh, we're gonna do another project after a while. But we're gonna take all of our tomatoes all of them. We put these up on July 26th and we're literally just going to fill this roaster up and we're going to cook all of these tomatoes down for the rest of the day. Yes, there's green bits in here and what we will strain all of that out. Um, and so we are both going to defrost and those are a lot. Those look great. We're going to defrost and cook the tomatoes at the same time. And I believe this is going to be, um, what we decide this is going to be? This is going to be just tomato sauce. Isn't that what we Tomato decide? sauce. Yeah. We're so, going to use old tomato sauce for... The ketchup. Ketchup and chili base. Chili base. So yeah. So we're going to take the jars that we already have and we're going to convert them into some condiments so this old tomato sauce gets used. So... We're going to use, as, as products get old, we can this in 2021. So as products get old, the nutritional value decreases. So I'm okay with reprocessing some of this older tomato sauce into a, a condiment. If you're not really getting any real nutritional value out of a condiment. So I would much rather have our fresh tomatoes be used in a tomato sauce. So we're actually getting that nutritional value that way. Then we're just going to use the old stuff for the condiments. and spice them up we are i have mrs wages you can tell these are a little bit old because the packaging is so different but we're going to go ahead and do mrs wages packets um for these uh two recipes instead of just doing a regular recipe okay where are we at oh my gosh look y'all look how full it is I'd and say then, that's the first batch i'd say we can oh my gosh look how much is still left do we need to go get the other roaster? I think we need to go get the other roaster. We could probably get one, maybe these, this half bag. Oh yeah. Will that fit? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's, that's four more gallons of tomatoes. We need to go get the other roaster. Okay guys, I think we're doing two roasters full. Because yes, could we do one roaster and like pack these in? But I really want to get all of these going. Um, so by this evening, we can finish this project. So Greg's going to go get the other roaster. Here we go. Second one's ready. Like, I don't like it. All right, Greg, tell us what we're doing. Uh, we are going to do the same thing we did with the tomatoes, only we're going to do these are the tomatillos to make salsa verde. So we're going to get the process going of thawing them and cooking them down and because we don't have another roaster we are going to do small batches in the instapot and these come out of our backyard too aren't they pretty and then these are all freshly grown in our garden they might fit they might if they overflow a little bit that's okay Mm, no, they won't. No, you got another bag in there? Yeah. Oh, darn. A big one. Oh. Uh, well, we'll just like pile it on best we can. Mm. It'll cook down. They'll fit later, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As they. And then we'll just keep that. So it'll thaw out. In there. And then we'll add it. And then we'll add it. Okay. Dwindles cool. down. We're just going to use the slow cooker function on this thing. Knit in. 
And we'll just use the slow, slow cook and put the time at like, go ahead. And then time, bump the time up to like, I don't know, six, seven hours. There you go. Hit start. You want high or low? I think high is fine because we're going to be here watching it. Okay, start. Yep. All right. We'll throw the lid on and check that in a couple hours too. On this for me, we got both of these roasters down to this. He's drained most of the, just the liquid off so we can cook this down faster. I am beginning to use my strainer and strain out the seeds and the skins from the pulp and the juice. So we're going to start this process. I've got another food mill that may take the skins and run them through again. But right now we're going to do this first and then work to that second step. So we'll bring you back whenever we get finished mushing and getting all of the pulp and the juice out of these tomatoes. But this so far smells amazing and we are down to this many tomatoes and it has been going for six hours. So this is great. We're right on track. I want you to see what we're actually using. I don't know how to pronounce that. A chinois, chinois, I don't know. But this is what I'm using over here to get the bulk of the big stuff out. And then I am putting the extra in the bowl and then we are using our sauce master and Greg is using the sauce master and finishing it up. And he's getting the skins and all the stuff that we don't want in the ketchup or the tomato sauce. And the good stuff comes out over here. So this is your first time using a food mill. What do you think? It's pretty simple. It is pretty simple. But this is what, whenever we freeze our tomatoes, some people were like, some people were like, Chris, you're putting all the skins and stuff in the thing. And oh my God, that's gonna be a pain in the butt, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not. Look, this machine does it for you. You can get these at Tractor Supply, Ace Hardware, Walmart, Amazon. And the reason why I love these machines, Greg is like seriously working hard. The reason why I love these machines is because they do not require electricity. So even if the power was out right now, we would still be able to finish this project, at least get the uh, pulp and the juice separated from the skins and the seeds and the stems uh, so we can continue the process and get this lovely uh, tomato sauce out of all of these amazing tomatoes that came out of our backyard. So we're gonna keep processing this. This will take a little bit, but that's okay. It's worth it. So as soon as we have something fun back to report, we'll be right back. Yep. We did it y'all. This is what's left of all of those tomatillos. So we've got the pulp and the juice in here. And this is what is left of our tomatoes. This is this juice and the pulp here. So now we get the privilege of cooking this down to the sauce consistency that we want. So we're gonna just keep this in the roaster. I got the roaster set at what, 300, I think? Yeah, 300. We're using the Instant Pot for the tomatillos, just because it's such a small batch and I don't feel like uncovering the stove, plus we're probably gonna process the ketchup and stuff over there. So we're just gonna let this roll. I'm trying the saute button on low to see how this is gonna work and we're gonna, we'll see if it works. And then if it doesn't, we'll put it on slow cook and just let it roll for a little while um, until it cooks down. We're in no rush to get this process just yet. We want the consistency to be correct first. Today on Every Bits Counts Challenge, we had some uh, banana pepper, hot banana peppers that Greg picked earlier that we need to get rid of before they started to go bad. This is one of our homegrown white onions and this is our very first bell pepper. And then on the top, we peeled a whole head of garlic which only had like four cloves in it. So this is 100% grown right here at our house. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a glass weight on here because we're gonna do a ferment. So that pushes everything underneath. This is called a pickle pipe. So we're gonna put a pickle pipe on and screw down a lid. Hey, I did that one-handed. And we are gonna let this ferment for anywhere between five and seven days and turn it into hot sauce when we're done. So I think today is the 28th. So 
check for the 28th we are done <laughs> oh hey y'all i'm chris and this is is it worth it y'all and we are back at it we took a couple day break this uh last week of the every bits count well last full week of the every bits counts challenge and we are making it back to the chili base and the ketchup so we are going to work through those two recipes and i have some adult supervision that needed some loving so we're going to get him put down hands washed and then we're going to get back to turning old tomato sauce into new products stick around First things first, we are gonna make my favorite Mrs. Wages chili base. We're gonna use all of these little bitty half pint versions of our tomato sauce that we canned in 2021. And we are gonna make, I, I will be right back. Boy, that he wants held or something. Um, we're gonna turn all of these little ones into chili base because not only do we need to use up this tomato sauce, um, the nutritional value has gone down so. I don't mind making a condiment out of them and then we need the jars too so all right these and this are going into here and we're gonna heat it up and let it uh, simmer or cook down for a really long time today we got all those jars in there so it's about halfway up that pot the next ingredient is four tablespoons of sugar because I have two packets if you're using one packet it would be just two tablespoons we're going to throw our packet in there and we are just following the di directions on the back of the packet there's the first packet and then this is going to cook down for a hot minute because we want this to get real nice and thick and we're just going to use the directions on the back of the package we'll bring you back whenever we're ready to put the chili base into jars all right, we ended up with 11 pints of chili base. There's nine in here, and there's two in here. So if you didn't know, you could use your electric presser, uh, pressure canner to water bath. That's what that WB is on this one. Um, so we're going to water bath those two, and then these nine, as soon as... This one will do it on its own. This one, as soon as the water starts boiling, we'll start timing for 40 minutes. And then next on the list, we are going to do ketchup. My problem with the ketchup recipe is it uses a cup and a half of granulated sugar. So I'm gonna go do some research and see what type of replacement, sugar replacement, I can do for this recipe i really do not want that much sugar in this ketchup the tomatoes are actually pretty still taste pretty good um the tomato sauce is also very thick i know it's probably not going to be a usda recommended recipe however i do not want that much sugar in my ketchup so if i have to go rogue i will flash real big on the screen going rogue so if you do not want to follow this recipe and you don't feel that it's safe then don't don't follow the recipe make sure you use the whatever is on the back of the proven recipe on the packet i'm okay with going rogue on some things but that is a personal choice i make for myself and my family if you do not want to choose to go rogue then don't follow this recipe and don't come at me in the comments either i know i go rogue it's cool my family's cool too here we have it we've got everything in the mrs wages ketchup in here and that is and it's a double batch so we've got 12 cans of diced tomatoes which i just use my tomato sauce uh two cups of white vinegar two cans of tomato paste i have not put the sugar in yet because i want this to cook down first for a little bit i've done the pouches we've um we st stop, uh, skipped the core tomatoes remove skins no 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 because we already had it already done in our jars we've done the combined stage minus the sugar and now we're going to move to the freeze it or can it or serve it uh, on this packet once this cooks down and oh look i've got boilage i can start 
I want it a little bit harder than that, and then we can start uh, start timing that. So ketchup is on. Chili base is getting ready to do the countdown on this side. And this guy's still spinning. All right, y'all, it's a mixed bag. Um, I am going to use Splenda. Now, all the research that I have, now I'm going rogue, so use sugar if you want to use the Mrs. Wages packet and you don't feel comfortable going rogue. The guidance is, if the sugar is used as the preservation method, don't switch it out. This has plenty of vinegar. So this is sugar is used for flavor, not the preservation method. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a cup, two cups of Splenda. And this is the one to one. You know, this is the one to one bag, not the little granules. Um, and we're going to put that in the ketchup. That's for flavor. There is enough vinegar in here for the process. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to opt to pressure can this for 25 minutes instead of water bath for 40. That way it's just an extra layer of protection to make sure that I know that we have canned this at a high enough temperature that not only are we taking care of the sugar element that's taken away in case it is some sort of preservation method, which there's enough vinegar in here, I don't believe it is. Second, um, I, that way I'm, I feel safe and I feel safe feeding it to my family. So those are the changes that I'm gonna make. If you don't wanna make any of these changes, follow the packet, can't water bath can for 40 minutes, you're good to go. We're using Splenda. And good y'all, waiting on one more to pop. It looks like we've got the rest of them are sealed and this is the end product of the chili base. Next on the list is getting the ketchup jarred up. Jars are ready. Ketchup is ready and all we need to do is clean up our mess, get the pressure canner out and keep rocking and rolling. Right, we brought out the Presto canner this time because we had enough in here to do one full load. I think I've got nine on the bottom, three wide mouths on top. So we're gonna use the Presto canner today. We haven't brought her out in a while. Let's get the lid on, lock it into place. I've made sure the water level is correct. The uh, rubber gasket is there. We are going to wait until we have steam coming out of here, time it for 10 minutes, and then we will can for 25 minutes. We also, I went ahead and put ketchup in a jar so we can enjoy this this week. And I will tell you, I love the flavor. It's fantastic. So when this is done, we'll bring you back and show you what the jars look like. Pressure canner is locked. We've got steam. I don't know if you can see it on camera, hopefully. And we are timing, <coughs> excuse me. We are timing for 10 minutes. After that 10 minutes, we will put the weighted gauge on and it's 10 pounds of pressure for my altitude and where I'm located. And then we'll bring it up to pressure and start the canning process. We have it. We've got canned ketchup. We had one siphon, so we'll probably have to put that in that jar. We had one siphon, may or may not seal. I don't think the lid was on correctly, look at it. Everything else looks great. I'm very pleased. All right, y'all, that does it. That is the fourth week, full week of the Every Bit Counts Challenge. So excited to have those old tomato sauces converted into something we're gonna use pretty quick, so. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us each week. We really appreciate you. Please like the video, it helps the channel. Comment if you have any questions about what we did this week. And as always, subscribe. We know we love you and we'd like to have you a part of this channel. And until we see you on the next video, bye y'all.